What's going on, 4th and 5? First of all, I want to say thank y'all for all the support you've had, and we're going to do something new. We're adding another element to the channel. I think y'all are going to like this one. I'm going to start really digging into the comment section. There's a lot of questions there, and so once a week, uh, we're going to select one day where we pull up some of the posts that we've seen. What would help? is if you have a question, add a question mark on it because we can separate that when we go back and look at our analytics and all that stuff to really push these to the forefront. So let's get into it, uh, our viewer response segment right now. I'm going to start with Jay Greer says, DJ, do you think these players are getting this kind of breakdown after the games? It doesn't look like it. They're making the same mistakes every game. It's almost like they are so afraid of making mistakes and screwing up they're indecisive on the responsibilities and hesitant when they have to make a split decision. Second decision, I'm assuming what that is. Uh, Jay, uh, yes, they're getting these breakdowns. They're in the film room. The only reason I'm able to do these breakdowns is because I went through the exact same thing, and uh, that's what we are just coached to see. Some see it better than others. Um, now, one thing that you said in your post they're indecisive in the responsibilities. They're hesitant when they have to make split-second decisions. I think you hit it right there, Jay. Um, my first year in a new offense, I was hesitant. I was indecisive because I was learning on the fly. And it was very difficult to pick that up my first year. Now, I had a really good year under Coach Petrino uh, just because uh, Casey Dick uh, just liked to throw to the tight end every single time. Um, but still, I was still learning a lot of things. We had young receivers. But the great names that you know under the Petrino era, the first year we were going through that offense, very indecisive. And so what that does, when they break the huddle and they get to the line of scrimmage, just like you said, they're thinking a lot. Okay, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? And in the SEC, when you have to think before making a move, it's already too late. They have to get to that point to where they're in this offense long enough and comprehend it well enough to where they're no longer thinking, thinking and they are reacting. That is going to make an explosive offense. I've seen it in the quarterback, the receivers, the tight ends, the offensive line, almost everyone on that football field still being a little bit hesitant. It does seem like the defense is coming along a lot faster, though. Okay, next up, uh, another question. This is from Steve-O, 306. Why is Petrino not using the tight ends? Appreciate the great content. Uh, your opinion on this offense is the only one I listen to on YouTube. First of all, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, why are they not getting the ball to the tight ends? One, pass protection is so bad right now that they almost have to keep them in to uh, have an extra person block. Um, but let's just take that off the table for a second. Um, I think Talon, uh, Talon does lock in on specific players, what he feels more comfortable with so he can get the ball out faster. I think that is another unfortunate side effect of poor protection and him not having time for plays to develop. And even when the tight ends number is called, I can kind of see it on the field. I know when Luke or when Washington are the number one option, um, they have to do a better job of running routes. And I'm going to be real. I would love to say, just throw the ball to my boys, throw, to, throw the ball to my guys. And I love Luke. I love what Washington has done. Uh, I, I love it all. But if I'm being honest with my guys and I were their coach, uh, I would show the times we have these corner routes when we're we're using our body too much and not creating space, but we are colliding too much and trying to big bore our way out. Well, that's slowing us down. One, you have a quarterback that doesn't have a lot of time in the pocket. He really can't wait on that. And then it's also really messing up spacing where if you're trying to throw into an extremely tight window between you, uh, the guy defending you and the sideline, because when you run those corner routes, we're just getting pushed out of our track. I would say too much. It's not creating great opportunities to, the, for the quarterback to throw the ball to you. So I'll be hard on my guys because I know they can take it, and I know they're great. I think both of those guys have great potential to be uh, big-time players at the next level on Sundays, uh, but we have to clean up our route running if we want the ball. It's just as simple as that, and hopefully they hear that and take that as a challenge and be open. Be open. Got to be open. Uh, stop letting these people latch on to you and cover you all the time. Uh, another question right here. This kind of goes hand in hand with the first question we had. Uh, so if coach Bobby Petrino's offense has a steep learning curve before being able to play freely without overthinking, this is a perfect lined up question. Uh, how much can this team realistically progress in the course of the season? Does the roster turnover in this NIL portal era create issues for us because of the offensive complexity? Uh, DKMD. 
9227, you're on it. I 1,000% agree with you. Uh, a challenge for a coach. And the difference is when you have guys that come in for the, from the portal, you, you hope that they, you know, are a second or third year guy that have had time to somewhat understand college level concepts when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, but trying to have someone understand your system to perfection to where they're not thinking, but reacting, it just takes time. And with the NIL and the portal, it's uphill battle. It, it really is. There has to be a culture built around a program that convinces these kids to stay and want to be a part of it more than just how much you can pay them. They really have to see this place is the place for me. So that's an uphill battle. I wish I had a better answer for you. I would love for Coach Petrino to come on the podcast and talk about it. I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, that's a tough one. But you just brought up a great point, and I agree with you. And it makes it extremely difficult. All right, I got another question right here. Uh, got to love this one. DJ, I like the hat. How do I get one? Uh, yeah, we got merch now. You see merch all over the place. We got koozies. Uh, we got these hats. We got keychains. Uh, we got uh, all type of stuff. Uh, here at 4th and 5, you have to go to allofmeshops.com, allofmeshops.com. I'll try to add a link so it'll shoot you directly to this page of um, where the merch is being made, where you can purchase uh, one of these 4th and 5 hats. I tell you, if the first person I see, I got to make sure I carry a 20 on me. The first person I see uh, at a Razorback game wearing a 4th and 5 hat, if I bump into you, uh, I'll give you a $20 bill. Um I don't really carry cash on me like that, but from here on out, I will. Uh, that'd be pretty special, and I would love that support. All right, another question right here. Hey, DJ, can you have an episode of a former or current current players? Current players is a little tricky because you got to pay these guys, which this kind of goes into the thing where uh, we do have segments open for sponsorship. And the reason I would love to make money doing this is so I can have opportunities to pay guys to come on here, that have had opportunities to – do so much more to create more content for everybody who who likes this. So uh, that's a little tricky. I wouldn't say it's necessarily in fourth and five's budget at the moment, but hopefully as this channel continues to grow, we'll get there one day. But as far as former players are concerned, uh, I know a lot of those guys, and I'm, I'm sure they would love to hop on. So this is what I'll do. Uh, go ahead, leave some comments, and put the question mark next to them. Let me know who you would like to hear on fourth and five, and I'll try my best to get them on for an episode. That's from the Hogfather. I appreciate that post. All right, another one right here. I'll let this be the last one. Uh, this is from Nicholas Fitz. Do you guys have a, you know, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Anyway, a place to donate to, uh, to help with producing more content. Love what you do. First of all, I really appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, it really does. And so this is what um, I think we're going to do. The merch would be awesome. Uh, but we're going to create, I, I was thinking about this, um, maybe a Venmo or a PayPal or a Cash App for fourth and five. And um, like, I'm, I'm still going to do this segment regardless uh, but I want to create an opportunity if you really want to make sure I hear your comment or see your comment or reply to your comment. Like I said, we got thousands of comments through all the content that we've put up. It's impossible to go through it all. Uh, I'll create that page. And if you really want me to answer your question or if there's something that pop up in the game that you want me to make a specific breakdown on, even if it's a specific play or player, I will try my best to do it. Uh, if you go to that page and, and donate to that, something simple. Um, let's just say 20 bucks. I'll make sure that I pull that to the forefront. First, that would help us grow the channel tremendously. Uh, it'll make sure that I answer your question here on fourth and five. And uh, I think it would just be absolutely awesome. And I'll tell you this, if y'all donate and you put your question attached to the donation and I don't get to it, I'll send that donation back. Um, I feel like a lot of people know me on a pretty good level and you can trust me when I say that. And if I don't give it back, that means I'm getting to it. So I got to work on putting that together first. I think that'd be a really cool element to add something else here to the show, but I appreciate y'all. Y'all keep sending in the comments and uh, as always, I love the support. The best way you can support this channel, just hit that subscribe button. Uh, it would really mean a lot. Y'all have a good one.